Within the past 48 hours, U.S. Democratic presidential hopeful Hillary Clinton took to the stage in Las Vegas for a rally on the very same day of the largest hacking convention in the world, DEFCON 24, in the same city. Amidst cries of being hacked by the Russian government, the Clinton campaign has been hit by FBI investigations, the resignation of DNC chairperson Debbie Wasserman Schultz, and calls for the imprisonment of Hillary Clinton herself. This all due to the WikiLeak of thousands of personal emails from Clinton's account, separate to the one she should have been using on U.S. State Department servers. But could there be more that could put the presidential candidate behind bars? I'm Afshan Ratansi. This is Going Underground outside the Ecuadorian Embassy in London, where WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been arbitrarily detained by the British government for four years. We asked Julian Assange whether he has the email that could put Hillary Clinton in prison and talk about whether the next leak could change the outcome of the U.S. presidential election. That's all coming up in today's special edition of Going Underground. Julian Assange, thanks for agreeing for this interview. Aren't you worried that you're on this channel, RT, after being accused by Hillary Clinton, basically, of uh, working for the Russian government? We know Russian intelligence agencies hacked into the DNC. WikiLeaks is now publishing all the hacked emails. I don't think WikiLeaks can be constantly worried about PR. Uh, I've been called a Mossad agent. Uh, it got so bad, in fact, that the ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, had to put out a press release uh, denying uh, that I was a Mossad agent. I'm not sure actually that that's particularly helpful. Uh, a cat torturer, a CIA agent, etc. So it's expected uh, with our publications. Russia uh, has been brought up uh, by Hillary Clinton most recently, just a few days ago, on Fox. So I think it uh, is necessary to address uh, what WikiLeaks feels is its perception uh, of its own publication uh, to the RT audience. Everyone accepts that the emails that we have published, the 20,000 DNC leak emails, uh, are completely accurate. So no one is saying, no, I didn't say that in this email, it's a fabrication, etc. That's accepted. It's not surprising that it's accepted because WikiLeaks has a 10-year publishing record where we have never got it wrong. Now that's an uh, impressive business. It's also why uh, we take a while uh, to publish uh, what we have because we want to keep that perfect record. Now, give, given that the um, real source is known, in this case, it is the DNC, it is Debbie Wasserman Schultz, it is the uh, Lewis Miranda, the head of communications. We know they are the original source. So there's a uh, quite a difficulty in the Clinton campaign to try and uh, outmaneuver the publication. So. Um, the content itself is unquestionable, so instead you have to bring in some other actor. So the actor that they've tried to bring in uh, is the Russian intelligence services. Hillary Clinton just said, we know Russian intelligence agencies hacked into the DNC. We know they arranged, of, arranged for emails to be released. Yeah, so on the, actually she has a slight, a slight variant on the we know. Uh, uh, I don't think she says emails. I think she says some documents. Because the... The uh, difference here is that do state actors hack uh, the political organizations of um, different countries? Does the United States government do it? Absolutely. Uh, of course, it uh, hacks the political parties of many different countries. Uh, does French intelligence, Chinese intelligence, Russian intelligence hack political parties in order to collect intelligence? Uh, yes. Did they hack the DNC? has at least one state actor hacked the DNC. If you read very carefully, uh, they say it's been hacked um, many times over the last two years. Um, and our sources say that the DNC security is like Swiss cheese. Uh, the um, DNI, the Director of National Intelligence of the United States, uh, several months ago said that both the RNC, the Republicans, and the DNC were being attacked uh, by a range of actors um, from philosophical opponents uh, to uh, states engaged in espionage. Um, now, the head of the DNI, uh, James Clapper, who's responsible for all US intelligence agencies, he's the boss of the boss of the CIA. Uh, if anyone knows what US intelligence agencies knows, knows he, he knows. And on Friday, he 
had to come out and say that there's a lot of media hyperventilation, uh, that uh, they have no idea uh, as to what uh, motivation is, um, even if they did know who it was. Uh, so that's the, the head of the DNI dampening down ideas that they know who it is. Uh, now, this is a separate question to the release of our email. So in the US media, there's been a deliberate conflation between DNC leaks, which is what we've been publishing, and DNC hacks of the US Democratic Party, uh, which have occurred over the last two years by their own admission uh, a number of times. I think this statement by Hillary Clinton on Fox really does need to be tackled because it uh, concerns us directly in our publications. Um, what she is uh, attempting to do is to conflate our publication of pristine emails. Uh, no one in the Democratic Party uh, argues that even a single email is not completely valid. It hasn't been done. Um, and the head of the DNC, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, has rolled as a result. Um, and whatever hacking has occurred of the DNC or other political organisations in the United States uh, by a range of actors. Um, now, in the middle, we have something um, which is the publication by other media organisations uh, of information uh, purportedly from the DNC, and it, it seems to be the case. Uh, so that's a, a series of Word documents and PDFs published by The Hill, uh, by Gorka, uh, by The Smoking Gun. This is a, a completely separate uh, batch of documents uh, compared to the 20,000 pristine emails that we had really, we released. In this batch of documents released by these other media organisations, um, there are claims that in the metadata uh, there's uh, someone's done a document to PDF conversion uh, and the, the, in some cases the documents, the language of the computer that was used for that uh, conversion uh, was uh, Russian. Okay, so that's the circumstantial evidence uh, that some Russian uh, was involved um, or someone who wanted to make it look like a Russian was involved with these other media organisations. That's not the case uh, for the material that we released. Any Russian connections between Hillary Clinton and, uh, and Russia? Any Russian connections there? Hillary Clinton has done quite well strategically to try and draw connection between Trump and Russia um, because she has so many uh, connections of her own. Now, my analysis of uh, Trump and Russia is that there is no substantial uh, connection. Why do I say that? Well, because Trump was trying to invest in Russia before Putin in the 1990s, after Putin, in fact, nearly all the way up to the uh, present moment. Uh, and he's had no success. He did not manage to build hotels and so on in Russia. So that, that shows the, how um, um, insubstantial uh, his contacts are. There's an extremely well-documented pattern of when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, those people, companies, governments, who wanted a decision by the Secretary of State in their favour, making large donations uh, to the Clinton Foundation or in some other cases, uh, business deals with the people around Hillary Clinton. Now, one particular instance is the approval by Secretary Clinton uh, of selling 20% of the U.S. uranium uh, reprocessing rights uh, to a Russian company to be exported to Russia. So at that time, a large donation was made by those Russian interests to the Clinton Foundation. In addition, Clinton's campaign manager, Podesta, uh, was on the board of a company called Jewel Unlimited. And Jewel Unlimited held some of these rights uh, and received a $35 million investment uh, from Russia. And that's a Russian government company. And also, um, um, Russians were on the uh, board also with Podesta. So the kind of email revelations from WikiLeaks reveal that Hillary Clinton is a Kremlin stooge? I wouldn't say Kremlin stooge, but there is a much deeper connection uh, 
on record with Hillary Clinton and Russia um, than we are presently aware of uh, with Donald Trump. Well, some journalists would argue that it's, uh, it's actually the, the subject of the revelations that's more interesting to, to the American voter about the election, um, while the media, of course, is fascinated about whether the well, Kremlin is working very, with you, whether you work for the Kremlin, basically. No, but, but it's very, I think it's a, a genuine question. You should, you should ask uh, the sources of information. Um, um, the least, however, in the case of WikiLeaks publications. Why do I say that? Well, the principal reason why you want to know the source of some statement is to understand whether it's true or not. It is a big issue uh, in the case of other media organisations who are simply making claims and not publishing original documents. I'll give you an example, a um, very, very interesting example. I've done some research on the Turkish coup. Okay. Um, now, within, it's not spoken about uh, in the West, but within Turkey, the Turkish newspapers are, are publishing el elements of a theory that the United States was directly involved in the coup. The US intelligence are, are backed uh, Feta Gulen, who's based in Pennsylvania, as the head of the Gulen cult that uh, has been implicated in the, in the coup. In fact, according to the Turkish government, is the leading actor uh, in the coup. He's wanted by President Erdogan. Yes, and they've put out an extradition request and so on. Um, but one of the, the key independent points of evidence, not coming from an interrogation in Turkey where people might have been placed under duress, is that in the middle of the coup, NBC published that Erdogan was on his way to Germany to seek asylum. And they say this was told to them by a US military source. So what the, what the hell is going on there? Uh, because that went all the way around the world and was used to, un, uh, used to further the chance of the success of the coup uh, within Turkey, because if the president has fled, uh, then he has lost control. NBC, a close supporter, so Trump supporters would say, of, of Hillary Clinton. So would a, would a Hillary Clinton presidency endanger the NATO alliance and the ability to, to uh, store American nuclear weapons at Inchilic Air Base and use it as a base to bomb Iraq and Syria under Hillary Clinton? Well, I think uh, either government is uh, potentially a, a problem because of, I mean, that's a, that coup was uh, in Turkey a very serious business. Hundreds of people uh, have died. About 100,000 people have been fired or arrested uh, in the post-coup purge, uh, in a, in a, opportunistically in some cases of um, political enemies of Erdogan, in, in other cases uh, trying to purge uh, the society of the Gulen movement. Because the Clinton Foundation's uh, major donors include members of the Gulen movement that Erdogan says were responsible for the attempted coup d'etat. Right, so I mean, Erdogan's going to look at that and uh, treat Clinton suspiciously. But I mean, you know, regardless of who becomes president of the United States, you have an extremely large bureaucracy, uh, intelligence bureaucracy, that has its own mind in things. So uh, he's going to look, unless there's a, unless uh, Trump is elected and engages in a significant purge um, of the CIA, for example, I think Erdogan will continue to view it very suspiciously, especially as, as long as. Um, as, as long as we've got Feta uh, Gulen being um, protected in Pennsylvania. Julian Assange, thanks. We'll have more from Julian just after this break. So back to the democratic process in the United States. Basically, the first batch you released showed, and obviously we did have, at least you've got to admire Wasserman Schultz for resigning very quickly after your emails were released, after the WikiLeaks publication, there was a dirty tricks campaign against Bernie Sanders. So Democratic primary voters didn't really understand uh, the, what was going on during that process? Uh, so go back. Uh, Hillary loses the election. Uh, he loses the primary process against Obama. At that point, Tim Kaine was the head of the D DNC, the Democratic National Committee. Debbie Wasserman Schultz uh, was Hillary Clinton's campaign manager. So then, some kind of deal is done, whereby Debbie Wasserman Schultz becomes the head of the DNC and Tim Kaine 
steps down. Um, now, if you're Hillary and you're thinking strategically that you're going to run again in four years or eight years to have your campaign manager as head of the DNC, uh, controller of the, if you like, the regulator who's regulating the, nom the nomination competition uh, is a huge strategic advantage. Okay, so that, now that's Wayne Ford um, and the 20,000 DNC leak emails that we released. Okay, so they're from Debbie Wasserman Schultz, head of the DNC, and six other uh, prominent people, finance, communications, and so on. And so what they show is that within uh, the DNC, there was a, a unity of the uh, most senior people, including Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, to act uh, against uh, Bernie Sanders in the nomination process and for Hillary Clinton. Now, <clears throat> in what, what particular actions were performed? Well, there's a lot of discussions. There's so discussions about we can um, use a captive reporter and uh, push out the fact that Bernie Sanders might be an atheist and not a Jew and this is going to cost him in the South. And where uh, MSNBC, um, uh, on a, a, its most influential morning program, uh, Morning Joe, was uh, defending Bernie Sanders. Um, then Debbie Wasserman Schultz called up the president of MSNBC. Amazingly, this is not reported in the US media. It is reported in the US media that they called up uh, Chuck Todd, uh, who's the host of Meet the Press. Okay. Uh, something much more serious is not reported, that Debbie Wasserman Schultz herself personally called up the president of MSNBC to apply pressure in relation to positive coverage uh, about Bernie Sanders uh, on Morning Joe, their big morning TV program. Okay. Then, then to, uh, to my mind, what is the most serious from an evidentiary point of view? Uh, it is the communications director, uh, Louis Miranda, making an instruction to his staff to pump out a black propaganda story against Bernie Sanders saying that his supporters were violent uh, and to put this out in a quote unattributable unquote manner. Uh, why do I say that is the most serious? Because it is an instruction given through the chain of command to staff. It's not a discussion, it's not any one person calling up the, another person um, and it is um, to depict Bernie Sanders supporters as violent. Uh, so that is not just a critique, um, that, is, that is not just to give Sanders a break here or make things a little bit harder for him there. Uh, it is to demonise a Democrat in the eyes of the public. So the Democratic Party demonising a Democrat in the eyes of the public through covert means. Well, there is no way, presumably, Hillary Clinton can win if there is a link between Hillary Clinton and ISIS Daesh. Now, I know your WikiLeaks is reviewing all these different emails. You have so many of them, and you need to uh, look at them and who they can damage, who they can't, all sorts of things WikiLeaks does before releasing them. President Obama is now bombing uh, ISIS Daesh positions in Libya, so it's, it's reported. Did Hillary Clinton use Libya as a conduit to sell arms to ISIS Daesh in Syria? Uh, the US government at the time that Hillary Clinton was in charge of foreign policy, uh, 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 did use um, uh, Libya uh, as a conduit uh, to get arms uh, to jihadists uh, in Syria. That's well established, uh, not just by um, um, a range of our materials, uh, but by the investigative work of Cy Hirsch uh, and a variety of other investigative reporters in the United States, some of, some of those even published in the New York Times. And any of the emails, I mean, you have mentioned that uh, Libya comes up in so many of the emails that you've been releasing. It, 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 As regards to Hillary Clinton, in, as in, in, the, in the batch of, of uh, 32,000 emails um, we released um, um, a few months back, 
uh, there are 1,700 um, in relation to Libya. So, it, uh, in, including, I, I suppose that the most useful one is, uh, which is colloquially re referred to as Hillary Clinton's Libya brag sheet. Um, so, she was documenting all the ways in which she led the invasion of Libya in a, in a, polit in a political and, to a degree, um, an organisational sense. So pushing it within the US government, bringing in the European partners, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, even going, going there herself personally. Anything to add to reports that, um, according to the French papers, the big French industrial conglomerate Lafarge, which has been donating money to the Clinton Foundation, and has got the, the reports in the French press were it was uh, sending, uh, it was relating funds with the ISIS Daesh, any any information, any emails that connect up Hillary Clinton to ISIS Daesh through Lafarge? Well, most of this work was done by Le Monde, so that's the the New York Times equivalent uh, of France. Um, and so what they show is that uh, Lafarge, which is a, a giant, amongst other things, a giant uh, concrete company, transnational concrete company, uh, it was in, involved in Syria. There's uh, Interestingly, more than 350 uh, Lafarge-related emails in our Syria emails release. So that's two million e emails that we published about Syria, including the personal emails of, of the President Bashar al-Assad. Uh, and so um, the investigation by uh, uh, Le Monde uh, reveals that, um, that they paid uh, ISIS Daesh uh, money um, uh, taxes, uh, if you will, for their operations in certain areas. Uh, yeah, they engage, engage in a variety of um, business, okay. business, deep, they're business, they're deep. Deep. Clinton, yeah. Clinton Foundation. Uh, we're waiting. Uh, uh, and um, Hillary Clinton's involvement is that uh, money from Lafarge in 2015 and 2016 went to Hillary Clinton uh, Foundation. So that's recent. Now you you ask why. Go to Hillary Clinton Foundation. Actually, there's a, a long-term relationship between Lafarge uh, and Hillary Clinton. Uh, she was a member of the board, uh, for example. That's do you expect good. that? I know you can't comment directly about the pending email releases from WikiLeaks, but do you expect more about the Clinton Foundation? Yes. I have to also get to uh, uh, Yemen because Saudi Arabia does crop up in the, some of the emails you've already released. Twenty million people now facing humanitarian disaster. Uh, Clinton Foundation mentions to, uh, there, was, there was no mention of the Clinton Foundation of a DNC conference, noticeably, at all, about the good works it does. Do you think part of it is that connection to Saudi Arabia, let alone the 28 pages of connection of 9-11 to Saudi Arabia? Uh, what is the connection between Hillary Clinton and Saudi Arabia that certainly got Israel yeah, angry? Well, it's, it's extensive. I mean, the relationships between Hil Hillary Clinton and Saudi Arabia, between the Clinton Foundation and Sa Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Arabia is probably the largest single donor uh, to the Clinton Foundation. Um, uh, and um, you can see uh, Clinton's arms export uh, policies, why she was Secretary of State, favouring extensively Saudi Arabia. Yeah, William Binney, the whistleblower who's been on our show, says that uh, the NSA can easily get access to all these emails. So if there is illegality in the pending emails of your release uh, or malfeasance in the ones you've already released, President Obama could presumably act on it and get Hillary Clinton charged, regardless of whether you're about to release an email, which would uh, mean that James Comey or the FBI would have no alternative but to arrest Hillary Clinton. Well, our, our view, which we have already stated, is that uh, the evidence that the FBI has um, is enough for a grand jury to indict already. Um, that's not hard. It's, it's actually uh, saying that uh, a grand jury will indict a ham sandwich if you're instructed to do so. <laughs> exactly. But, um, which I'm ha having, because I have a grand jury myself, Against a federal you. grand jury in Washington, D.C., I'm, I'm well aware of uh, what they're like. Um, but 
the prosecutor has to ask the grand jury to indict. The prosecutor doesn't ask the grand jury won't indict. Uh, so that's the basic problem. Do you believe she can win given the emails you've so far not Can she win the election? That's an interesting question. I, I wouldn't be willing to say so far. And just one last question away from the US presidential elections. It's five years since Mark Duggan was uh, shot to death by British police. Of course, Black Lives Matter in the United States has come to the fore partly because of evidence of gained via technology, mobile phone footage. What message would you have for Black Lives Matter both in the United States and here in Britain? Well, it's transparency. I mean, the, the transparency uh, in relation to uh, DNC leak, which took the head of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, head of the, the Democratic Party, um, that came from us um, presenting to the public um, pristine, original documentation of what people were doing. Uh, and the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, movement has come up, uh, yes, by hard work for activists, but the, the, the core of, the, of what is driving it uh, is uh, footage that is undeniable. That everyone, it's not a matter of the, you know, do you believe the police, do you believe uh, the friends of the person uh, who was shot, the witnesses. No, there's undeniable footage of exactly what has occurred, and that is not only stimulating parts of the black community, I think the black community has under, understood this for all too long, actually, but it's stimulating uh, enormous acceptance and sympathy outside the black community because their argument is proven. Julian Assange, thank you. You're welcome.